Swift UI class, our primary goal is to get familiar with the core data framework and develop a fantastic task manager from a boring to-do list application while we are having some fun. By doing that, we will also learn how to store, retrieve and update some content using Apple's native persistent storage. Each lesson will be straightforward, and we will develop either a new feature or covering an interesting golden nugget about the powerful core data framework. So you, and me, together, we will build up this impressive application step by step, and learn by doing. If this is something you want to learn, then launch Xcode and start coding along with me. Set up. All right, let's get started. Open the resources folder downloaded from this section. As usual, there are three additional folders and a supplementary workbook document inside it. You will find the source code of the finished project in the green folder. It can help you when you get stuck and need some quick assistance. In the pink folder, you will find all the resource materials. Finally, we are going to save our new project in the blue folder. Great! Now let's open the workbook document and take a brief look at the learning objectives. As you can notice, there is a comprehensive list of the topics we're going to cover in this tutorial. New project. Awesome! The second step is to launch the latest Xcode editor, then create a new Xcode project. Make sure that the VIASA project is selected at the top menu bar on the new window. Then choose the app option from the available templates. Finally, click on the next button to create the project. Configuration. Now we need to configure this new core data project. For the product name, enter, devote. For the team. If you already have an Apple developer account, logging in here allows you to build your app on a real device. If you don't have an Apple developer account, you can skip this part and test your app in the iOS simulator on your Mac. Organization identifier, we usually enter our website address in reverse order. For example, com. Swift UI Masterclass. Please make sure that your organization is different so you can compile the provided finished project if it's necessary. The bundle identifier is automatically combined from the project name and the organization identifier. Next, the interface must be Swift UI. Then the life cycle must be Swift UI app. After that, make sure that Swift is the selected language. And here goes the most important setting for this project. We must check the core data option without the CloudKit integration. Then leave the include tests options unchecked as well. After all of the necessary settings, click on the next button, and now we need to tell Xcode where we want to save the core data project on the computer. Please navigate to the students folder as the destination as I do. Now click on the create button and Xcode creates all files and folders for this fun project. Resources. Splendid. As we did many times before, we'll start the development by adding the pre-made resource materials to the project. First, select the assets catalog in the project navigator panel. Then click on the app icon in the middle panel. We can see an empty set of icons on the right part of the editor. Now right-click or control-click on the app icon group, as I show you. By doing this, a new contextual menu will show up. Select the Show in Finder option from this menu, and Xcode will bring us to the project's icons folder in a new Finder window. Next, open the app icon set folder. There is only a content JSON file in it. Now, in a new tab window, navigate to the icon folder in the resources folder. You will find the pre-made app icon in many different sizes. First, select and copy them to the clipboard. Next, we're going to add this set of icons to the project. Jump back to the project's app icon folder and paste everything from the clipboard into this place. You will be asked to replace the existing file. Obviously, click on the replace button and we are good to go. Excellent job so far. Asset files. Now it's time to add the rest of the asset files to the project. 
Go back to the Resources folder, then select the Color and Image folders there. After that, drag and drop these folders into the middle pane of the editor as I show you. Great! As you notice, we got a background color, a logo, and an image file. Now we're going to add sound effects directly to the project instead of the assets catalog. First, open the sound folder, then drag and drop all mp3 sound files into the devote folder in the project navigator pane as I do. When a new window pops up, select the copy items if needed, and the create folder references options. Before you click on the finish button, make sure that the devote project is also selected as a target. With all this prep work, we are ready to develop the core data application. Folders. But before we start coding, we will create all folders that we need beforehand. You know, I highly recommend you trying to prepare your folders and code structures in advance rather than later on. That said, select all MP3 files and group them into a new sound folder, as I show you. Now select the Content View Swift file and create a new group for the selection. Name it to View. Super. After that, let's create the following empty groups. Extension. Then another one. Utility. Now let's create another one called Style. Finally, select the two new files that this core data template provides us. The first file is the persistence file. And the second file is the devote data model file. Now from this selection, let's create a new category folder called Model. After that, we can reorganize these folders by dragging them in order as we like. So far, so good. Settings. Next, we're going to make some changes in the settings. Select the main project on the sidebar. Then, select also the devote target in the middle pane. After that, make sure that the landscape left and right options are unselected. This application works better in portrait mode. Now it's time to set up a new launch screen. First, click on the Info tab item at the top menu bar. It will show us the predefined app settings. As you may already know, this property list consists of key value pairs. That is what we will modify here. Right now, there is an empty launch screen dictionary. Click on the plus button, then select the background color key as I show you. After that, enter the following value. Background dash color. Perfect. Now let's add a new image to the launch screen as well. For its value, enter logo. Nice. The last thing that we need to do is to add here following parameter from the drop down list. Select image respects safe area insets option. Then change its Boolean value from no to yes. Guess what? Our new launch screen is done. The problem? All right. First, select the content view file and take a brief look at the preview. Do you see the list with some sample data? This is what Xcode's default core data template gives us when we choose to use it as a starter code for our project. Now, you may think this code is correct, but in reality, there is something that makes it useless until we fix it. And that's precisely what I'm showing you in the rest of this lecture. The very best way to prove this template is broken to test the default core data template by building and running the project either in the simulator or on a real device. So let's do it right now. When we build and run the project, first, we should see a pink background and the white logo on launch screen. But shortly after, the screen transition from that to a completely blank screen, as you can see. There is no list with the sample content. Moreover, there is no navigation bar with some buttons. So what's going on? It turned out that Xcode's shipping a broken core data template. But do not worry, because we can quickly fix it. The solution. 
First, switch back to Xcode and navigate to the end of the list view. There enter a new comment for this view, list. So, the problem with this layout is that it's trying to use the new toolbar API, but to do it in the right way is to add a navigation bar first. That's why we get only a blank screen in the simulator. To fix it first, we need to embed the list view into a new navigation view. Command plus click on the list name, then select the embed option from the contextual menu, as I show you. It will wrap the list into a new placeholder container. Now we need to enter, navigation view. And, as you can see in the preview window, a new edit button was added to the screen. We are not finished yet, because the add button is still missing there. But why is that? You know we need to make our code conform to the new toolbar API. And one way to do that is to put each button in this toolbar into a dedicated toolbar item. So let's do it. First, add a new comment at the end of the toolbar as I do. Enter a new comment, end of the toolbar. Then add another comment after it. New comment, end of the navigation. Now, here comes the real deal. Embed the edit button into a new toolbar item as I show you. Enter, toolbar item. Placement. Navigation bar. Leading. After that, we need to fix the add button similarly. Enter, toolbar item. Placement. Navigation bar. Trailing. And you know what? Both the edit button and the add button are placed on the toolbar as they should be in the very first place, in my opinion. But as always, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's see how our code works in the simulator. Let's build and run the project. See? That's much better now. We can add a new sample data by tapping on the toolbar's plus button. Let's try it out a couple of times. But not only that, we can delete the list items by switching to the edit mode as well. Look! This core data starter project works now, and the fix wasn't that hard either. I really hope you enjoyed this introductory lecture, and you are ready to get all the necessary information about the core data framework in the next class. I can promise you that by the end of the next lecture, you will have a fully functional to-do application on your hand. That's being said, see you at the class.